effective online English learning. Uh, I'm Mabel Martinez from Education USA Guadalajara, and today we are going to um, have two special guests, Shannon Martin and Samuel Adams, for Temple Center uh, for American Language and Culture, of course, uh, for uh, Temple University. So before we hear them as the expert on this subject, I want to tell you a little bit more about uh, what Education USA is. We are a global network of advising centers from the US State Department Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. So we basically uh, offer free advising services for anyone interested in going to the United States either for an English program, a bachelor's program, a graduate program. We offer unbiased, accurate, and comprehensive information about the full range of accredited U.S. Uh, higher education institution. And as I mentioned before, all the information that we provide is free, and it's uh, introductory information, all right? So we have three main activities. The activities that we do in the center, out of the center, and virtually. Of course, uh, currently, we are not uh, having in-center or out-center activities. We change all our activities uh, into the virtual um, platforms. So we are offering virtual advising, virtual workshops, webinars, seminars, and even fairs. Today, um, I mentioned to forget that uh, we are uh, near to 400, 400 uh, advising centers in, in the world. And today, Canada's, uh, Canada's advising center offer a fair, for example, today with 32 universities. Uh, so we provide different uh, types of uh, information sessions uh, about different different types of um, topics that can be interested for you, either scholarships, uh, language programs, uh, the, the application process, um, pre-departure orientations, how to get a student visa, so we recommend that uh, you follow us on our social medias so you can, you can know a little bit more about us. These are the five steps that we usually follow in our advising um, process. We help you research your options. We help you um, trying to narrow your options down because there are near to 4,000 university is in the United States, so sometimes it's hard to pick one. And then uh, once we have defined which university we will go, uh, we offer you guidance about uh, how you can finance your studies, what type of scholarships in Mexico or in the US you can get so you can uh, cover the cost of your tuition and uh, living expenses. Also, we help the students with all the application process, especially if you go into a bachelor's or um, graduate program, the application process is usually a little bit more uh, complex. So we help you with uh, all the documents or requirements that you are going to be asked. As I mentioned before, we offer help with the student visa, only with the uh, student visa, not the regular visa for go uh, tourism in the United States. And also we help you prepare for your departure. So if you want to know more about us, you can follow us on uh, social media, or you can also type educationusa.state.gov and you can find a lot of information about us. I don't want to take time uh, for our guest speakers today, so I'm gonna 
turn. I'm going to introduce Samuel Adams. He is instructional technology specialist for Temple University, and he is going to talk about how to make our English language learning effectively. Hello, everyone. So as Mabel said, my name is Samuel Adams from Temple University. I'm one of the English teachers in the Center for American Language and Culture, and I'm also the instructional technology specialist. What do I do? Well, in my job, I help both students and teachers in understanding how to use technology in the best way to improve their English language learning. So today, I'm excited to share with you some information about how students can effectively learn English online. So the world of learning has changed. Now, more than ever, there are many educational opportunities online. People from around the world have access to high quality courses and teachers, no matter where they are located. For example, students from around the world can be taking courses from teachers in the United States without having to leave their home country. This also means that students can have classmates that are in many different time zones and from different cultures all at the same time. The possibilities are really exciting for learning with such a diverse group of people. Next slide, please. So I want to talk first about really the two main types of format there are for online learning, synchronous and asynchronous. Now, those are big words, but you probably already know what they describe. The first, synchronous, is when you meet with your teacher and classmates at the same time online, usually with a video conferencing software like we're using today. But it could be just a simple chat program. It's most similar to learning in a physical classroom. Everyone meets and interacts with each other at the same time each day or on specific days of the week. The other type is asynchronous, which means that people don't have to meet at the same time. The teacher will create activities that students can complete in their own time whenever they want. Maybe some students like to do their work in the morning while other students want to finish their work at night. Or a student might decide to do all their homework in one long time block while another student decides to break up their studying into smaller blocks throughout the week or days. Essentially, asynchronous courses give students the choice of when they want to learn. However, you should remember that your teacher will have some due dates for assignments that everyone needs to follow. And the type of online course you're taking will usually help you understand when and how you interact with the teacher and other students. So it's important to realize that online learning requires preparation. Just because you're a good student in the physical classroom doesn't mean that you will know immediately how to be a good student online. And also, just because you're comfortable with using technology like your cell phone or chatting with your friends, watching videos online, does not mean that you'll have immediate success in an online class. For example, when you're going to school in person, you have a routine. You get dressed, you pack your book bag or your backpack, you prepare your materials, your textbook, you might travel to your school or your class. This is certainly different with online learning, but there are some things that you should do to prepare for your online learning, both physically and mentally. So next slide, please. So I'm gonna share five tips uh, with you that I think will help you to have more success in any online course. And that first tip that I wanna share with you is to check your equipment. Now, what do I mean by your equipment? Well, with online learning, your technology device will give you the key to your classroom. That's how you access your teacher and your classmates. So it's important to understand if your technology will give you a good experience for online learning. Of course, there are so many choices with computers, smartphones, accessories. So today, I'm not gonna tell you to go and buy a specific technology product. Instead, you should look at the online course you're interested in and check that your technology will be able to connect with it in a good way. 
If you can't find specific information about the program on the website, you should ask questions to the academic program in an email. Now, when I say check your equipment, here are some questions you can ask yourself. First, how powerful is your computer? Does your computer allow you to have more than one program open at a time? Specific things you might want to think about are things like the CPU, which is like the brain of your computer. That'll allow you to use different programs at the same time. Or the memory, or also called RAM, R-A-M. This will also allow you to have more programs and it will seem faster. So you might want to check for system requirements if your program provides any information about that. The second is, what's your internet speed? Do you have a stable internet connection? We talked about those two types of online learning, synchronous and asynchronous. The first type, synchronous, you'll probably want to have a higher internet speed because video conferencing software requires a higher connection speed. There are many internet speed tests online, such as speedtest.net, to see what your connection speed is. You usually want to have about 1.5 megabits per second, or Mbps, and that will provide you with a quality experience. Another question is, do you have a webcam, microphone, and headphones? You want to check that you have good accessories for interacting with your class. In general, headphones are highly recommended for asynchronous learning since they increase your ability to hear what your teacher and your classmates are saying and it reduces feedback, which is when the sound goes from your speaker into the, your microphone over and over. Both synchronous and asynchronous courses may require you to complete assignments using your voice or video. The website webcammictest.com has multiple tools which allow you to hear your voice with your microphone to check the quality so that you can see you're submitting good assignments with voice or video to your teacher. Next slide, please. My second learning tip is to test the applications. It's very important to try to access or log into your learning application before your class starts. Don't wait until five minutes before your first lesson on the first week of class. It's good to do this test a few days before your lesson or whenever your program gives you access. This way, you can tell your teacher if you have any problems before they become busy with teaching the class. This is especially true if you're using a smartphone for online learning. Many applications have phone apps that let you do your learning on a mobile network. However, you might be required to download a, a medium or a large size app before you're able to access your course. Download the application a few days before the class and test them out. Open the app. Try to log in with your institution access and See if your teacher has given you a code that you might need to enter. Identifying any technical problems before your class begins will help both you and your teachers. Next slide, please. Now, the first two tips were a little more technical. My next tips are focused on your knowledge and the interaction with your class. Learning tip three is understand the expectations. Now, what do I mean by expectations? Whose expectations? I mean, what does your teacher want you to do? How are you expected to interact in the class online? In a physical classroom, you're expected to show up on time and pay attention during the lesson. Of course, you would not use your phone for games during the lesson. This is an expectation of your attention. The teacher might expect you to raise your hand if you have a comment or a question. But online learning is a little different. You might have a different idea of what is okay than what your teacher expects you to do. Now, of course, you should follow your teacher's expectations since their job is to make sure you learn the material and they want to help you with your learning. In a synchronous class, you should know how the teacher expects you to behave. For example, do you need to have your video on during the entire lesson? Do you always need to have your microphone or audio on? 
Can you ask questions at any time? Do you need to use the chat for specific purposes? What about if you have to take a small break to use the restroom? How do you ask for permission? How do you let your teacher know that you're away from your computer? At the beginning of the course, listen to your teacher's expectations. If something's not clear, ask them questions about how they want you to behave. Now, asynchronous classes are very different from classroom learning. When you take a lesson in person, you can easily count the amount of time that you're doing your work or studying. With online learning in asynchronous, it's easy to think that you can spend as much or as little time as you want when doing your work. But this is a big mistake. Your teacher has set up their assignments in a specific way. So they have an idea of how much time it will take you to complete them. Ask your teacher what the time expectations are for the course or how much time you should be spending on the coursework each week. Does your teacher expect you to check the course on certain days? Maybe every day. Ask your teacher if you don't know. In summary, you'll have more success if you have a clear idea of what your teacher expects you to do in the class. Next slide, please. Now, learning tip number four is check your email often. Nowadays, messaging applications like WhatsApp, WeChat, Facebook Messenger, as well as social media applications like Instagram, Snapchat, those are really popular ways for us to talk with our friends and family. However, these websites and applications are not used very often for online learning. Instead, teachers usually prefer to use standard email. You might be provided with a student email account, depending on the school that you attend. It's important to check this email regularly, at least once a day. You might consider downloading the mail application on your phone and logging into your student account so you can keep track of your email messages. However, your teacher might tell you that they prefer to use a messaging tool inside of a learning management system, such as Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, Schoology, Google Classroom. There are many of these systems. It's important to use whatever application your teacher says is the main channel of communication for the class. Whatever the application is, make sure to check it on a regular basis. This will help you stay up to date on what's happening in your class. Next slide, please. And lastly, the fifth learning tip is to set up a regular schedule for yourself. This is probably the most important tip for helping you to complete your work in the class and achieve success. When you're in a school environment, you're forced to think about learning. You might go to the library to help you focus on your materials, but being at home can be distracting because your social life and your school life are in the same place. You might have some games or other things that take your attention away from focusing on studies. Whatever it is, a synchronous course, an asynchronous course, it's easy to fall into the trap of not maintaining a regular study schedule. In general, successful students are good at maintaining daily schedules. This is also true for business people. They know how much time they have during the day and they set specific times for when they will do their work. Find out how much time you need to st spend studying for each course. You already know this if you followed my learning tip number three. Then look at a weekly calendar which separates the days into hours. Fill your calendar with things that you must do outside of school, such as sleeping, eating, maybe helping your family. Then fill in the hours where you meet with your classes if it's synchronous. If you have an asynchronous course, this step is even more important. Pretend like you have a regular course meeting and set up a, a time block in your calendar. Commit yourself to, to show up for class, even if it's just you alone studying your material. Next, find where you can focus on completing homework or studying for each of your courses. Try to be specific with your time. Identify specific times where you'll focus on just one course and commit yourself to working on only that course. 
You'll be more efficient if you schedule your work ahead of time rather than trying to decide what to do in the moment. Finally, look at your course syllabus and ask your teacher for any important due dates for assignments or tests. Write those assignments in your calendar ahead of time, even if it's weeks or months away. This will help you to keep track of what you need to do throughout the school semester, and you'll be able to visually see when you'll be busy or have a lot of work to do. There are many free applications online can, which can help you to create an online schedule. One example that I like to use is Google Calendar, which you can also set to send you reminders when you need to do something ahead of time. Your school learning application also might have a calendar function. Sometimes you can combine these two applications. Whatever it is, find a system that works for you and use it to help organize your time. Next slide, please. So to recap, my top five learning tips for online learning are check your equipment, understand the applications and software, understand the expectations of your teacher, check your email often, and set up a regular schedule. As I said earlier, these are some general suggestions that apply to all types of online learning, no matter the level. But if you follow these steps, you have a solid foundation for a good experience with online learning. Next slide, please. Now, I always like to give some suggestions of specific websites or applications that my students can use to study on their own. So if you're looking to improve your English on your own outside of an online class, there are a lot of tools available. And many of my students ask me specifically how they can improve their vocabulary as well as their comprehension of native speakers pronunciation. So I wanted to introduce two websites that can help you with this. The first you see is Call Words, which stands for Colorful Words. You can visit this at colwords.com. This site has many organized sets of vocabulary words that are beyond your basic nouns and adjectives. So this might be good for intermediate, upper intermediate, and definitely useful for advanced students. What I like about the vocabulary sets is that they're more descriptive, they're more specific, and this helps you to be more precise in your language. In addition, the site has the main parts of good vocabulary learning. What's the part of speech? How do you spell the word? Can you give me an example pronunciation? What's the definition of the word? And can you use the word in a sentence? Another great feature about these vocabulary sets is that each word has a photo, which can really help with your memorization of the word. You can view the words by specific groups, such as positive words or negative words, or even words about things that smell bad. And there's a built-in quiz game. If you study with this website, I think you'll definitely see an improvement in your TOEFL or your IELTS score. The second website that I have on here is called English Accent Coach, which you can visit at EnglishAccentCoach.com. And this website was designed by a university professor in Canada and helps train students to recognize the different vowel and consonant sounds in English. English vowels are usually pretty difficult to, to hear and to discern one from the other. So the cool thing about this site is the ability to break the sounds down into very small parts, which can help to train your ear to recognize the difference between them. Then you can listen to the words with multiple syllables. It's almost like a game. And by playing this game, you'll learn the symbols in the IPA or International Phonetic Alphabet, which is sort of like a system of letters that shows you how something's pronounced. And this can help you because many English dictionaries have the IPA, so you can actually read the pronunciation of a word. And this is really useful because, as you may know, English is not a language where you can guess how a word is pronounced. When you create an account on English Accent Coach, it will keep your track uh, of your score over time. So you can see how you improve over weeks and months. 
So in summary, I think this is definitely a site I would recommend to add to your listening practice. So these are two websites that I think can help students at all levels of English language learning. Oh, okay. Sorry, that was a lot of information, but I hope you found it useful. Thank you all for listening. And if you have any questions, we'll have time at the end where I can answer them for you. And now I think Shannon is going to present. Yes, hi everyone. So as Mabel just said, this is Shannon Martin, also from Temple University. My title is Program Development Specialist at the Center for American Language and Culture, which just means I work with some of our short-term programs. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more today on ways to continue to work on English language online and a little bit about some of our programs coming up. All right, so in line with what Sam was saying, I also want to take some time to discuss more ways to achieve your English language goals if you aren't currently enrolled in an English language program. First, I think it's important to remember to include language learning in a way that you can keep doing every day, especially if you have more time at home right now. Consistency is very, and is a very, very important part of learning a language. If you dedicate around 30 minutes of study every day, this will help you achieve your goals, and this is a schedule that you can keep doing for a longer period of time. One part of this 30 minutes could include learning five new English words a day, just as Sam was discussing, learning that vocabulary. And in a week, if you practice every single day, you can learn over 30 words, and those words will really start to add up. Next slide, please. Other ways that we would suggest making time outside the classroom more useful would be to find other ways to include English in your everyday life. You might try learning to listening, excuse me, to a podcast. There are so many podcasts out there with so many different subjects. So you can find a topic that you're interested in and listen to it in English, or you can learn something new in English. You also might try using an app like Duolingo on your phone. Apps like these can give you shorter English lessons that can also add up to that 30 minutes a day. I also like to recommend keeping a journal, which can be very helpful. You can write about your day in English or just keep track of your English learning outside the classroom. This can be really fun, especially if you work on this for a longer period of time, because one day you can look back on your first few journal entries and see where your English has improved. Next slide, please. Also, one of the great things about learning a language is that there are tons of things that you already do outside the class or the virtual classroom that can continue to help you learn. So exposing yourself to English every day with more fun and exciting ways to do it can continue to reinforce your English language learning and help you achieve your language goals. So for example, you can create a WhatsApp group with your friends, but set the rule that everyone should speak English or type in English. So that means you'll get the experience, but you'll get to do it with your friends. You could also, if you love to bake, try following a YouTube recipe in English. Something I like to recommend is if you love TV or movies, maybe try binge watching your favorite TV show in English or with English subtitles on. Try again to find something you can change or add to your life just to get a little bit of English, a little bit more of it every day. A few minutes here or there can really add up during the day and it all counts to the amount of time that you're learning, even if you're doing it with something that you love or something that you enjoy. Next slide, please. Okay, so now that you've learned a little bit about learning English effectively online and also more ways to achieve your goal outside the virtual or in-person classroom. We're going to talk a little bit about Temple University and what some of our online classroom uh, activities and programs look like. So first of all, Temple University is a large university. We're a public institution and we're known for our research. We were founded in 1884, which by United States standards is pretty old. We have over 40,000 students and over 3,000 international students from over 130 different countries. 
As you can see here, our main campus is in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is the second largest city on the East Coast, just behind New York City. Okay, next slide, please. So I do wanna mention in these challenging times what Temple University is doing to take a stand against COVID-19 and how we're a regional leader in this fight. For example, Temple University has volunteered our Leacor Center as an overflow med medical facility for patients. Also, our professors and students are creating 3D shields, hand sanitizer, and streaming live music performances to support local and international communities. Next slide, please. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about Temple and Philadelphia, I'm gonna go into a little bit of information about our three of our different programs that are available to you at the Center for American Language and Culture or TCALC for short. For summer 2020, TCALC is offering some great online programs I do wanna mention the benefits of our online programs. So we have one-on-one -on -one instruction and real-time instructions with students from around the world. So as Sam was saying to you, and if you can remember back to that first slide, it is a synchronous learning environment. So these are small class sizes, uh, same high quality program with our instructors, and you can also experience some weekly online private tutoring sessions. We want to make sure that students are continuing to achieve their language and academic goals while staying safe and comfortable at home. Next slide, please. Okay, so first we have our Graduate Academic English Program or the GAE program. This is also offered online during our Summer 2020 program. The GAE program is an excellent choice if you already have an undergraduate degree and you're planning on entering a graduate program in the US. This program will help you improve your English language skills and build confidence needed for graduate level study. Here you can see a sample schedule of our graduate academic English program. This is a four week program. And throughout this program, you're fine tuning your writing skills in the academic English for graduate students and the integrated reading and writing courses. Also in this course, you receive intensive training on pronunciation and presentation practice. And to bridge that gap between everyday English and the academic English you'll need for success in your area of study. Next slide, please. Okay, so as you can see here, these are the dates and cost of our upcoming online program. The cost of the program includes tuition, fees, and materials. Additionally, the center at Temple does offer a 30% discount for Temple University students. So this is if you've been recently accepted into a Temple University graduate program, this is an excellent program for you to join before you start graduate school in the fall at Temple. However, we do accept students from all different uh, accepted graduate institutions, or if you're just thinking about applying to graduate school, if you've already graduated from undergraduate school. Okay, next slide, please. So now let's talk about our super intensive program. This is a program for high school graduates who are interested in improving their English in a short time, in just four weeks. This summer, the super intensive program will also be offered online. This program offers two tracks, which you can see here. First is the academic English track, which will help you build your presentation, pronunciation, and academic writing skills. In your morning classes, you'll learn how to summarize, support an argument, and use citations. You'll also improve your listening comprehension, comprehension, vocabulary, and fluency. In your afternoon classes, you'll gain skills to deliver a formal presentation while improving your pronunciation. You'll also learn about American culture through movies, write film reviews, and have lively class discussion, as Sam said, in a synchronous form. In the business English and culture track, this will help you improve your language skills and also knowledge about American businesses. So business track students attend business English classes in the morning where you're building, again, those presentation skills, for example. But in the afternoons, you work on business English skills like writing a resume or working on your LinkedIn profile or learning about business etiquette. Okay, next slide, please. 
So as you can see here, these are the dates and cost of the two tracks of our upcoming summer super intensive online program. Just as our GAE program, this includes tuition, fees, and materials, but also some of our online social events and student support services for students. We do have part-time options available for this program, and please contact us at tcalc.special at temple.edu if you're interested in pricing or more options part-time. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so the last uh, program that I wanna speak to you about today that is offered online is our Intensive English Language Program courses. So the Intensive English Language Program, or IELP for short, is for students who want to improve their English for academic, work, or personal success. This is a little bit different from our other programs because these are offered in seven week sessions, six times out of the year. Excuse me, six times a year. With 10 levels, the IELP serves students from beginning to advanced levels. And at the IELP, we love to say what's great about this program is that you're going to learn English while also meeting new friends from around the world and learn from instructors with advanced degrees and teaching experience. Also, successful completion of Advanced 2 in our program meets Temple University's undergraduate admission language requirement. Classes are offered in writing, reading, speaking, and listening, all of which include uh, instruction in pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar. You'll also get to choose an enrichment class, which I love, that you get to improve your skills in area like American expressions, English for business or science, or IELTS preparation. We also have a weekly course called Chatting with Americans, where you get to chat with native speakers on various topics to continue to improve your fluency. So next slide, please. So here you can see the cost for our IEL program. We have our in-person session here, but we currently are offering our program online. So you can see our online costs. You compare that to the cost of the online session because we have a TCAL care scholarship for students for taking our online program. The pro pro program costs include classes taught with this live remote video option, up to 21 hours a week of classroom instruction and tutoring, and then also just as with our super intensive program, you have the option to join online student activities and social events. And then additionally, we do offer part-time courses and prices, and if you're interested, please contact us about these options. Next slide, please. I did want to mention some of our upcoming winter programs in 2021. These are the programs we'll be offering on campus. Um, so we will be offering our Education USA Academy in January 2021, which is a three week academic summer program for high school students where you're learning English, uh, you're learning about college campuses, the application process, and experiencing cultural activities with other students from around the world. We also have our ACT program, which is the American Culture at Temple program. It is our most popular program. Unfortunately, we are canceled for the summer, but we will be running in January, 2021. And this program is where students will join us in Philadelphia, improve your English while also learning about American culture and exploring the city and beyond. Like the super intensive program, this American culture program also has two exciting tracks to choose from. All right, next slide, please. So as you've learned, Philadelphia Temple University and the Center for American Language and Culture, we try to provide many ways for you to grow your knowledge, transform your future, and create new experiences while you achieve your goals. We're always here from you. We hope to see you soon, and we hope you learned a lot about Temple, our programs, and also learning English online. So if you have any questions, we're going to take some time now to answer some in person on this virtual session. However, if you have any questions in the future, we will uh, have our email listed at the end here, and you can visit our website or our social media for more information. All right, thank you all so much. Thank you, Shannon and Samuel, for um, the presentation today. So, yeah, we do have a couple of questions. So the first one says, as a non-native English speaker,
how do you help students with false cognitive situations, words that are similar on both languages? Bad, uh, bad different meanings. I, I'll answer that question and how I approach that with my own students um, that I teach in my classes. The first thing is to be aware of that. Now, even just asking that question is a good sign of learning to recognize the differences between your native language and the language that you're learning, English. So being aware of false friends is an important thing. Now, sometimes uh, with some false friends in uh, whether it's Spanish, Italian, French, um, because English has a lot of words from other languages that we've borrowed over time. I like to teach my students how to recognize some of the uh, prefixes and suffixes or word parts, which can help them to sort of recognize what the meaning of the word might be and not relying on what the definition of the word is in their own language. So sometimes learning the, the structure of the words or how the English words are related to each other instead of how the words look or sound similar to your language can help. All right, thank you, uh, Edgar, Hope, um, Samuel, I think answer your question. If you have any other question, we will be happy to answer it. And then there's um, another question for Blessing Agbo, I guess. Uh, for fall 2020, for, for fall 2021 applicants, when will you advise uh, we take the standardized test. Thank you. And I'm, I'm not sure if um, I understand the question correctly. The standardized test for our program or the standardized test for um, English language programs in general, like, like TOEFL or IELTS? Mm, for graduate students. I guess uh, she meant, I guess she says GRE and TOEFL. So probably she wants to do a master program. Yeah. Um, with those standardized tests like the GRE, uh, which is a, a difficult test, I've taken it multiple times, or with the TOEFL, I think the important thing is to be familiar with the test. Um, if you're able to, and I understand that the tests are expensive to take, but if you're able to, try and take the test maybe more than once, or at least do a practice test ahead of time. And when I say practice test, I mean really make it as close to a simulation as possible. Set aside the time and go to a different room in your house and pretend like you're not in your house, but you're at a testing center. Being familiar with being in the moment and taking the test is almost half the, the challenge because a lot of times you can be very nervous during the test and that nervousness can sort of inhibit you or prohibit you from actually performing to the ability that you, you have. So I would recommend that in terms of how early should you take it, um, try to take it as early as possible, at least with a practice test, so that you feel more comfortable when taking it to a date that might be closer to your application date for your program. I'm not sure, Shannon, do you have anything to add to that? Yes, I will add one thing to that, um, to just be very careful about the different institutions you're applying to for your master's program. So just as Sam is saying to practice and get prepared, make sure you check for every institution when your GR, GRE score is due or if they have another score that you must submit with your application. This will change based on every university and sometimes this can even change based on the college within the university that you're applying to. So at Temple University, we have multiple colleges that offer graduate programs. For example, our Fox School of Business or our Boyer School of Art. Um, and these all require different scores and also may have different times when you must submit these scores. 
So if you have an interest in a particular university or multiple universities, you want to make sure you mark those dates on your calendar about when they're due because they can be very different for different institutions. And for most institutions, it's not important to take the test as close as possible to when you might enter the program. Actually, the test scores are usually valid for many years after. For example, a GRE score can be used up to four or five years after you've taken it, and the institution will consider that a valid score for application. But as Shannon said, you want to check with the institution that you're interested in applying to to see what their requirements are. But in general, earlier is much better than taking it later or closer to your application date. Okay, and just to um, complement a little bit uh, the information, um, you can send us an email and we also can provide you information about the cost and some free resources that you can check um, so you can prepare for the GRE test or the uh, TOEFL um, test. Uh, so we have another question. So the cost, the cost, the, the prices um, are in pesos or Mexican pesos or US, USD dollars. Yes, so the prices listed um, within the presentation today are in US dollars. Um, but again, do check our website for the different costs of in-person versus online. So I, they were both listed in the presentation today, but just to make sure in case you're confused, you can check our website for exact costs of each individual program, or you can email us and we're happy to help you through the application process and go over the cost for each individual program. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Um, if you have uh, more questions, please, if you have more questions, please, um, you can reach out either by email or um, through social media. I just want to thank you, Shannon and Samuel, uh, one more time for uh, taking you the time to present this webinar. It, it has been a pleasure to be here and with you. And also thank you to all uh, the attendees uh, for taking the time to, to be here. I hope this webinar uh, helps you with your English language learning and feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thank you again all. Thank you, stay safe, stay healthy.